We've all heard it before, and weddings have become no exception. Do it for the gram. <laughs> Everyone's looking for that picture-perfect moment to capture, uh, to share on Instagram. So, how can you make your wedding Instagram-worthy? You know, I hear you say that a lot. Do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. I say it's probably like my catchphrase. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about honey grams, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you, you know Instagram? You know that, that social media app? <laughs> That you're never on. Yeah. yeah. Ryan gets surprised when our friends know things about our lives that I've yeah. posted on It like Instagram. creeps me out. I'm like, they'll be like, oh, I saw you went to a brewery. I'm like, how did you know I went to a brewery? <laughs> like, he was on social media. I did it for the gram. You did it for the gram. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to get that, that, that cheersing uh, boomerang. See, I know things. Look at you. I know things. Look at you with that knowledge. So what are people looking for to be considered Instagram worthy? I mean, it's really anything that you haven't seen before. So something that hasn't been done at every wedding you've already been to, um, something that's really unique, um, something that people are going to remember and want to emulate themselves for their wedding, you know, next time around. Gotcha. Okay. So what are some examples? Oh man, well, there's so many things and most likely we haven't even seen it yet, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I think for ceremony, one really cool thing that we're seeing a lot of right now is the way that people are sitting. Um, I know you've been talking to a few people that are doing like in the round or yeah. um, people are definitely getting creative with it right now uh, with COVID and restrictions and things like that. But um, I think you can do really cool things during the ceremony with seating and with the backdrop. Um, something that became really popular was that that like octagon shaped backdrop. I feel like that's kind of picking up now. Yep. Um, but it was really unique. You know, you didn't see a lot of it in the beginning and now it's becoming more popular. Um, during cocktail hour, I mean, my personal favorite is the the champagne wall, yeah. uh, which you can, you can really customize and do a lot of cool things with. Um, yeah, you and Lauren are pretty much obsessed with the champagne wall. A little bit. Yeah. yeah a little bit. Um, but I mean, even on that, you can do like cool sayings or, you know, different ways to display it. So there's lots of cool things that you could do. Um, tap walls are becoming popular. Now I'm listening. Now you're listening, yeah. right? Now, wait, so tell me more about that. Uh, you can do all different kinds of things on tap. Of course, beer, but you can do a signature cocktail on tap. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, specialty place cards are becoming popular, uh, you know, with the little name tags on little mini bottle of champagne or a flower pot or hand sanitizer given the yeah. times. Right. Um, I actually just saw a really cool sign too on Instagram that was like, you know, have like a cute little saying and then was like a hand sanitizer station. So, you know, kind of personalizing and doing different things like that. Um, and then for the reception, uh, neon signs are becoming kind of the, the new Instagram worthy thing. Flower backdrops are always going to be cool. I feel like, um, you're literally just naming your wish list for the office. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're just, it's all the things that you want to put in here. A floating cake. That's your wish list that, for the office. Yes. Is that an option? <laughs> it's a permanent floating cake in yeah. the office. Yeah. I think we're into it. Um, but anything that's like hanging, um, you know, Anything that builds interest, lighting, et cetera. Yeah. Um, a unique send off, maybe not sparklers that we're seeing at most weddings, but something kind of different. Oh, cool. Um, so where can couples get ideas? Well, of course they can look at Instagram. Right. Um, I would say, you know, you can look at Pinterest, but again, if you're trying to do something really unique, it's best to like look outside of like traditional weddings. So um, movies like the, um, Crazy Rich Asians, where there's like a lot of a inspiration. It's a really good movie. Um, movies, um, TV shows, different things like that, where you're seeing things that are unique. Um, you can even look at like fashion shows or, you know, different, different things like that where you can kind of pull inspiration that maybe hasn't been done yet. Okay. And of course, a planner is a great place yeah. to kind of pull that inspiration too. Obviously. <laughs> um, so can you have an Instagram worthy wedding on a budget? Yeah, I mean, I think it's harder, right? Um, you can definitely have more, you can definitely do more with uh, more money, of course. Right. Um, but if you're on a budget, I think the best thing to do is to put your money into like one really Instagram worthy piece. Um, so maybe you do really cool place cards that everyone's gonna be talking about. Um, so I think you can, it can be done. It's just, you know, you have to kind of pick and choose. It might not be your whole wedding overall. Have you seen those, those, uh those posts on, on social where they'll be like what the Instagram photo looked like and then what was actually happening. Yeah. So you should probably not do that for our wedding. 
<laughs> yeah, you can do just like that small little piece yeah. and make that Instagram worthy. Mm. I think too, now that we're having so many more micro weddings, it makes it a little bit easier True. because your budget goes further. So you could really do something more amped up, more Instagram worthy than you could for maybe a wedding for 250 people if, sure. you're, on, if you're on a tight budget. Yeah, of course. Because like as we talked about like episode one, which is basically your head count is your guest count is what's going to drive the budget in the biggest way. Yeah, for sure. So what's the biggest bang for your buck on a budget? That's a mouthful. I think like a signature cocktail. So maybe it's the champagne wall or a tap wall or something like that where you put, you know, a little more money into it, but that is like your signature piece. Yeah. Um, even with a signature cocktail, having like a cool glass can make a big difference. And, you know, that can be, a, it's, just, it's an investment because it's going to be more than what's kind of included in your traditional sure. budget. But it's a small investment, so you could really amp it up. You know, I love um, like the colored glass, right? Yeah, now. I was just thinking that. There's yeah. a company in Nashville that does a really good job with that, and they have a lot of unique pieces. So you could really kind of amp that piece up and really make that, um, you know, interesting and different and unique. Um, your send off um, place cards could be another easy place. You could even kind of make your place card also a favor, like with the mini champagne or the hand sanitizer. Um, so I think there's different ways like that that you can you can spend a little more but, and make a big impact um, on one place. Okay. Um, what's the best thing that you've seen? Oh, there's so many cool things right now. I mean, I love the neon signs. I feel like that's really different. Yeah, that's cool. Um, we just did a wedding that had like the big letters that were, you know, their name, that they did their first dance in front of. Um, so I feel like there's just some really cool stuff happening right now. I mean, champagne walls is, is my favorite for sure. Especially with, I like the champagne walls that have the neon sign on it. Like that's cool. Yeah. It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, what's the benefit of having an Instagram worthy wedding? You have an Instagram worthy wedding. <laughs> no, I mean, people talk about it, right? People are going to be like, Oh, I want this that I saw at my friend's wedding. Um, which is the whole point of like social media. Right. Um, and your pictures, you know, will be more likely to get published in publications. Um, it's more likely that your pictures become something that's being pinned a lot. Um, so you get kind of all of that uh, press worthiness with your, with your wedding. Okay. So what are your tips for throwing an Instagram worthy wedding? Um, I would definitely choose a hashtag if you're planning to really promote this and you want it to be all over Instagram, ask your guests to use that hashtag with all of your pictures and ask your vendors as well. So make sure your hashtag is really known, um, maybe on your website, let your vendors know about it, um, have a sign at the wedding. That way people know that you're really trying to get this, this wedding out there on Instagram. Um, and then make sure that you prioritize your budget accordingly. So it right. sounds like if you're trying to have an Instagram wedding, Instagram worthy wedding, the things that are going to be important to you are going to be the decor and the specialty items, your photographer, because you have to have good pictures in order to have um, a good, <laughs> an Instagram worthy pic wedding for sure. Um, you probably want to have a planner who can help you kind of design these things and execute these things on the big day. Um, and then after the wedding, you'll have that photographer and planner who can also submit the wedding for you to publications. Mm -hmm. You can do it yourself too. But a lot of times, you know, your vendors might already have relationships with those publications and be more likely to get published. Gotcha. Well, I will tell you, since you didn't ask, what's the best thing that I've seen? What is the best thing that you've seen? I like with, especially with all everything kind of going to micro and virtual right now, I'm loving the backdrops, which I know you have, don't have as much control over, but we've done some where they're in New Jersey, right on the water and you can see like Manhattan right behind or right like on cliffs or over beaches and things like that. That's pretty cool. Like that's, it's for me, it's the, it's the backdrop more than anything, which again, that's just, you know, that's already there. Well, with the micro wedding, I feel like you have more flexibility on like what that backdrop is. Yeah. You know, um, you can choose to be on the cliffs. Right. Um, or overlooking the water or whatever, you know, overlooking the city, whatever it might be, yeah. um, a lot easier, um, for 25 people than maybe you could for 250 yeah. people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it gives you a lot more flexibility. Well, awesome. Well, what are some of the key takeaways for our couples as they, uh, go and figure out their Instagram worthy wedding? I think you need to, um, you know, have that conversation early on, prioritize if you want to have an Instagram worthy wedding prioritize that you're going to, where you're going to spend your budget and make sure that you're choosing, you know, a great photographer, a great planner. And, um, from there, then you're making sure that you're kind of doing things that are different and unique with your, with your wedding. So you can make an impact and 
be something that people want to copy from Instagram. Makes sense. So if you want to see some amazing inspiration, check out Bustled, B-U-S-T-L-D on Instagram or the gram. On the gram. On Do the it gram. for the gram. Do it for the gram.